Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you're doing well. Got automotive news today for you. This is really cool. I've got a lot of news. I got some on my phone, I got some on my computer, and yes, I've got notes. We're gonna talk about used car prices and how they are increasing, but I am also going to explain what's going on the backside of the banks and this banking collapse that we are experiencing right now and what is about to happen. And you're gonna be able to see it in real time. It's gonna get you super pumped because I know a lot of you, including me, are waiting on the sidelines to get our dream cars. And when I say cars, I do mean plural because this should be something that you've been getting ready for to take advantage of when nobody else is. When everybody's running out of the burning, you know, financial collapse building, uh, you're going to be running in to pick up assets uh, hand over fist while pretty much everyone thinks you're crazy. All right, here we go. We've got two different stories. Which one do I start with? All right, let's start with uh, this is right here uh, entitled, I can't even tell where it's from. Oh, yeah. Cal CalendonianRecord.com. Uh, high car prices and loan rates fueling an affordability crisis in the auto industry. Now stick around because I've got some information from an insider. Yes, it came from a coffee uh, uh, insulator. That's the only cardboard I could find. Um, about real life boots on the ground numbers of what people are paying for vehicles and literally how much you're paying in financing charges. It will blow you away. It says right here, uh, Automobiles were far from the only commodity that saw a drastic change in the cost in 2022 with historic inflation affecting every nearly every sector in the economy. However, a perfect storm of ballooning costs and increasing loan interest rates has resulted in an affordability crisis that is putting pressure on both the auto industry and individual consumers. Let me stop there and say that it's going to get even worse for the auto industry because banks are about to seize. I mean, they're going about to seize up and we're going to explain that in a second. It says right here, over the past two years, the VAI hasn't just increased, it's done so exceptionally. Uh, oh, here real quick, sorry. The VAI is the Vehicles Affordability Index. It is done so exceptionally from January of 2012 through August of 2021. The VAI hovered between 32 and 36. Following that period, however, the VAI began a steep increase reaching 43.6, a massive, massive increase. Um, and that was from the most recent report from uh, Cox Automotive. This figure is at an all-time high, meaning that cars are less affordable than ever before. According to the Experian State of Automotive Finance, market Q of uh, quarter three 2022 released in December of 2022, individual new car payments are also at high at record highs, both for leases and loan payments. And we're gonna get to an example in a second. The report states that the average lease payment in quarter three of 2022 was 567 per month. This is a 12.1% increase over the average of the average monthly lease payment of 506. Let me stop there and move to this next story. And this might explain a little bit why. Now we've been wondering why car prices keep going up. You expect them to come down and we saw a period of them shrinking. The price is coming down when Mannheim was uh, uh, letting us know what was happening in September and October, and they did come down. Yet, and this is seasonality, we saw an upswing in January, and what I'm about to talk to you about in February, okay? Now there's a reason for this. First off, there was a little bit of a reprieve in the, the, the rates, and the reason why is because everyone expected on Wall Street for the Fed to pivot and start lowering rates. And what they did is they raised them, but they raised them much less than what was expected, right? What this does is it drove down um, interest rates. Yeah, that came into the mortgage rate market. It flowed into the automotive market, but only for a slight bit of time. Now we're in not only a banking crisis, but interest rates started moving up because the Fed understood that when they started getting the jobs report, payroll reports, especially non-farm payrolls, they started seeing, oh my gosh, we gotta raise rates. And so the street priced all that in and right went right back up, right? Okay, now, check this story out of uh, uh, Cox, it's from Cox Automotive itself. Wholesale used uh, vehicle prices see large increase in February. It says wholesale used vehicle prices on a mix, mileage, and seasonally adjusted basis increased 4.3% in February from January. This was the largest increase of the full month of February since 2009's 4.4% rise. Isn't that interesting that during the crash of 2008, you actually saw the prices rise in 2009? Well, let me explain something that was going on. You see, 
back in 2007, that's when people were losing their homes. 2008, they were losing their homes. By 2009, people were trying to repair credit. They were diving back into the market. And, and I'll give you an example. I had a friend literally have their house foreclosed on and they were in, a, they had a new car, literally, within eight months of being foreclosed on. That may blow your mind and it may not because what you need to understand is the banks need to make loans, right? And after banks got super tight on lending in 2007, 2008, by 2009, they were getting uh, all of this fresh stimulus money from the banks, from the Fed. And so they went out and started again to do these risky loans. And I mean risky because no matter what someone's credit score is, if you look at what they're, they just came through the bankruptcy, you gotta sit there and go, that's pretty risky because if they claim bankruptcy once, they may do it again, right? But that didn't matter. See, in 2009, banks started flooding the market with uh, new car loans. I also saw people after a foreclosure getting into a house in two years, from two years, from when they lost their home into getting to another one. The point is, is that you can always get a loan, but at what cost? And that's what we're gonna get into in a second. But check this out. It said, the Mannheim Used Vehicle Index rose to 234.5, uh, down 7% from a year ago. But February's increase was driven part, uh, partially by the seasonal adjustment. The non-adjusted price change in February was an increase of 3.7% compared to January, moving the unadjusted average price down 5.6% year over year. Now, let me explain why. I, I talked to a handful of uh, people in the industry, and the consensus is, is for, for me is that what happens is during tax season, People start getting their stimulus, no, I want to say stimulus checks, their tax return checks. <laughs> I'm still in 2020, 2021. Um, they get their tax return checks and it's like burning a hole in their pocket, you know, because they have, they live a life of being in debt, being overweighed by debt. They want to impress people that they probably don't even like, but they, they just have this insecurity and they've got to run out and got to get something new, right? And so, or new to them. So they go out and they dive into uh, the, the car market and they buy a new car. And this is one of the strongest times of the year for car sales. And it's literally driven by these tax returns. And I'm gonna to get to the numbers in a second, but I wanna show you a chart because this is staggering. Somebody paying $90,000 for a car and they only put $5,000 down. But let me, sorry, I'm divulging too much. Let me get to this. Um, now everyone gets freaked out because these stories are saying Ninja, or you're thinking Ninja, you said cars were gonna come down. So they are, but they're going up. Let me show you this chart, check this out. And I know it's backwards, sorry. I just like looking at myself in the camera. All right, this is the Mannheim Used Vehicle Value Index, all right? And you'll see that it goes from the year 1997 till now. Now, if you look over here, this is super high tech, by the way. Thank you, editor. You see the peak right here that came in in the used vehicle uh, values. That peaked out right at 2020. You'll see this sharp drop. This is the sharp drop that we were referring to in 2020 down into uh, later in the year, then to uh, what, September. Then you see this spike right here. Now, what people need to realize is that spike is what I refer to, or a lot of stock traders refer to as a dead cat bounce. And again, when I talk about markets, all markets are driven by one thing and one thing only, human emotion, all right? Value is only perceived by what someone will pay for something or a group or the masses will pay for any given item inside of an industry, uh, in, in a sector, if you will. So what you'll see is you'll see that top coming in in 2020, right up there, right there. Now, you see the drop and this dead cat bounce. This dead cat bounce, I believe, is because of two things. One thing is what happened this last uh, December as rates came down, people dove in and when you saw people getting checks from tax returns. As a matter of fact, it's getting so scary, um, you're seeing companies feed off of this anxiousness, this uh, sense of, I have to have my stuff and I have to have it now. And the lower class and poor uh, classes of Americans are actually even uh, paying to get their tax return ahead of time. And the company that fronts them the money on their, their the tax return that the IRS is gonna eventually send them, they take a cut too. I mean, the consumer is completely, completely shot. So let's get to my notes. 
And uh, this is the only cardboard I could find. So I was talking to one of my insiders and they were talking about uh, the craziness that's still going on with people that are borrowing money to pay for cars. And here's an example, 2019 Dodge truck, okay? The purchase price was around 45,000 bucks. The APR was 28%. Now, I bet you a handful of you right now, your mouth's just dropped because you're not used to paying a car payment. As a matter of fact, I'm not really either. Um, and so the purchase price is 45,000. The total out the door, once they pay all the payments, if they pay them all on time with no late fees, penalties, right? Not paying it off early, just paying every payment, which by the way, was um, 72 months, all right? So they're signed up for a 72 month loan is $94,000. Now think about that. You're gonna pay over the life of that loan $94,000 on a truck that in a few years will be worth 20. Staggering, staggering, staggering. Now check this out, this is the worst part. The total monthly payment, let me know down below what you think this is gonna be, but or what you think of right now what it's gonna be, and see if you're right or wrong. $1,300 a month. Absolutely staggering. But the sad thing is, is I talk to my uh, my friends in the auto industry and they say, this is normal. There are people that are literally signing their life away. Literally, it's like a debtor's prison. And that's what's driving this. It's still greed. And it's greed because if you can't pay cash for it, you can't afford it. You don't deserve it, right? There's some things in life that we just can't get around, like a house, you gotta pay payments on a house, right? You gotta go get a mortgage because it's so hard to save up that much money because you're also paying rent, right? Um, but I'll tell you, from a guy that was making six figures and drove literally a $2,000 beat up Honda Civic from 1991 for five years while I saved and invested and made my, my first clip of cash, um, I don't understand it. You know, um, now I do understand from the aspect of being insecure and wanting something to impress people like that Ferrari when I was young. I totally understand that. Um, but it, that's something that I had to fight and I had to overcome, you know. But this is the reality, guys. Let me know in the comment section what you think of this. Uh, are you guys in debt right now like that? Are you paying double the amount for your vehicle after you pay all of the minimum payments? This is uh, very staggering. And this is the kind of things that you're going to want to get on top of right now before this crash takes effect. And lastly, but not least, I wanna share with you one thing. Uh, you know, I was talking with my insider, I told you that story about the, the person that was trying to buy a $100,000 car, makes $2 million a year and has $1.5 million in credit card debt. Something you wanna to understand too, and this is what I was talking with them about, they said the reason why in the end they were still dumbfounded that they were able to get this car loan but it came down to a credit line that they had, you know, a little bit over a half a million dollar credit line with a large bank. And and I said to him, I said, well, he said, and, and really, because they asked, they said, why would you give this loan out? We're just curious. I said, well, that credit line shows that if someone else has confidence in him, we're gonna have confidence in him. And I told my friend, I said, you realize that bank right now is being questioned as far as its solvency. It's not gone insolvent yet, but it's being questioned. And what I'm gonna tell you right now is gonna blow your mind, and this happened in 2008, that bank is about to take that credit line and pull it back. Because if he isn't using it, they're gonna go, you know what, let's change it from a little bit over a half a million, let's change it to 100,000, because right now we're having problems. And that is, in probably this gentleman's case, his safety net, and it's about to be taken like that. People need to understand how big of a deal this is. Guys, I hope you got something out of this. Thank you so much for watching. The Economic Ninja is out.